Bismillah and welcome to Sinan Sad. The direction of the Kaaba, which is known as the Qibla, is where all Muslims face when performing their daily prayers. And in this video, I'll talk about how finding the Qibla developed with time. In the early days of Islam, the sun and the stars were used to navigate and find the direction of Mecca, which is where the Kaaba is. But their methods were not very accurate at the time. Let's use Google Earth to find the direction of a mosque constructed in the early days of Islam. For example, the Imam Ali Mosque and Shrine in Iraq. You'll notice the mosque is facing south, and the Qibla direction is southwest. Now finding the Qibla is not intuitive even when using modern maps. For example, it's impossible to represent a spherical surface on a flat rectangle. Let's use an orange peel and draw the world map in it, and attempt to fit it inside a rectangle. You'll end up with empty spaces here and there. Modern maps today, like the Mercator, distorts the sea and land masses to compensate on the empty spaces we just mentioned. This is the Mercator puzzle. Provided by Google, it shows you how countries change in size based on their location on the map. This big piece of land in the north is Saudi Arabia, and this little guy in Africa is Greenland. So let's all assume that we're in the US. Where would the direction of Mecca be? Most of us would say east or east-south, but if you check Google Earth, you'll find out it's northeast. Confusing, right? Here's the explanation. The shortest distance between two points on a sphere is found on the great circle. Let's do another orange example. Slice an orange in half. The slice side is the great circle. Let's represent the US and Mecca on the great circle and draw the correct direction, which is northeast, and the presumed correct one, which is east-south, and cut those lines and compare them. You'll notice the difference in their length. Now, curved lines and maps is not a new thing to us. We see them all the time in flight paths. But here's a cool thing. Philosophers in the Islamic Golden Age knew about these spherical properties when drawing up their maps. It started with the translation movement of Greek and Indian books, and the Islamic philosophers picked up where they left. They noticed that the existing maps were not accurate and did not have Islamic monuments or cities like the Kaaba or Baghdad. So they've decided to redraw it and put it in themselves. Initially, they used existing techniques to map distances, such as the Pythagorean theorem, but it was limited to right triangles. But there was a bright mathematician called Abu Wafa who was able to develop the law of signs, which worked with any triangle. The law of signs that we know today is derived from a greater law related to spherical triangles, which takes into account Earth's curvature. And an orange peel is a spherical triangle. Medieval Islamic maps became the new standard or reference Let's check a mosque constructed during the golden era, like Samora. The accuracy is uncanny, and no denying that philosophers in that era mastered the art of cartography and navigation. In present times, most mosques face the Kaaba accurately, and most of us use a GPS or Google Earth to find our way. But Google Earth and the GPS still uses the basic laws of spherical trigonometry that was developed during that time. I hope you learned something new today. Do share with me your comments. And thank you for watching. Salam.